creating a teaching environment that is really engaging and interactive on Zoom is something that people are not very looking into because to be honest, Zoom already offers almost everything that you ever could ever need. You can share slides, you can share your screen, you can even play music and sound. You have the chat where you can ask people things, you have the poll. So there's a lot of features that Zoom already have. And if you just think about in terms of features and what you wanna do, it will look like that everything is just perfect. But let me tell you this, Zoom is a great application and it's a great, great platform. And it's built primarily for meetings. So when you are using the features that you wanna use on Zoom, they are going to be mainly designed for the kind of interactions that you have on meetings. Everyone can share a screen at any time. You can share any screen you want, but you have to choose. And there is a lot of friction in every single thing. If you want to interact with the chat and there is a lot of people, there will be a lot of messages coming up and you cannot bring messages to the screen so that people can be just comfortably watching uh, the session instead of lost in getting lost in the, the chat. And if you want to share slides, it will be like these slides, this super big slide with you in the little corner and people were going to get bored after a minute of seeing you very small and the slide very big. And I've seen people that like try to juggle around making the screen share and then stop the screen share so you can focus on the camera and then making the screen share again. But this is very distracting for you as a presenter as well because your entire view changed. And when you share screen, you stop seeing the audience. So it's a place, it's a platform that is optimized for meetings. It doesn't mean that it's not a great place for us to create virtual audience experiences. It just, need, just means that you need to use it differently. It's not the same way that someone would just pop, pop in and uses a meeting. The way that I do my teaching sessions on inside the show and other workshops that I do, I will have very limited use of the actual Zoom features. Actually, I don't use a sh uh, share screen. I don't use share audio and I, I use the chat differently. And my number one role to the way that I, I do stuff on Zoom is removing friction and increasing connection. Everything that I do, I want it to be frictionless so that I can make things happen at the speed of my interactions. I don't have interruption. If I want to share my screen, I don't want to stop what I'm thinking and sharing the screen or clicking on the interface to figure out how to share the screen. I just want to do it immediately, a button. We have the Stream Deck device, which is this little, it's a little keyboard that has monitor for keys and it can control basically anything on your computer. And I have a Stream Deck, um, several different Stream Deck setups where I can just jump into them, it like folders. And I have one that controls my screen. I can tap one button and it will show my screen and it will not make the audience disappear in front of me or changing any, change anything. I can be always sure of what I'm sharing. I don't have the fear of, oh, am I going to share the, the, the wrong screen? And this is one of the other things that stops, uh, stops us when we are sharing the screen. We want to make sure that we are sharing the right thing. And even so, we don't know if this is right or not. We have to ask. So are you guys seeing the, the slideshows? Because it was meant for, uh, for meetings. And when you are in front of an audience, you're either you're teaching, you're selling, you're performing, whatever you're doing, it's, it's different than just a meeting. People are watching you, you have an audience. So this is not, this has to be timely. This has to be effortless. This has to be interactive and you have to feel connection with the audience and the audience must feel connected with you. So every single thing that makes you stop breaks this connection a little bit. So you want to be looking for ways to make it frictionless. The way that I do screen share and slide um, slides on Zoom when I'm teaching is a little bit different. I use what's called OBS Studio. OBS Studio is 
a software that is free, runs for Mac and Windows. It simulates a webcam. It creates what is called a virtual webcam. And instead of connecting your, selecting your webcam or camera on Zoom, you're going to, going to select OBS Studio. And from there, it's like you have Photoshop. You could place an image, you could place a, even a video. It's not just static, of course. You could place your camera. So you can create different compositions of your camera with different backgrounds. You can design exactly what your audience is seeing. It's like a blank canvas for you to create anything that you want. It, it's pretty simple to use, just drag and drop. You basically can drag and drop elements that they are sources and you can add, group them in scenes. So if you just change scenes, you change the elements that are being displayed. It's super cool, super simple, and that's the way that I do. I will have the OBS set up so that when I wanna share a slide, you press a button and the slide comes lighting from the left into my screen. And then I can make them go away with the press of another button. So on my computer, I'm looking at the slide. I'm looking at what slide you have selected, like any other slideshow control. You see the current slide and you see the next slide. But the cool thing is that I can hide the current slide from my audience. So I can go to the next slide and I can just leave it there hidden. And when I want, I just press a button and the next slide appears. It just looks like I know exactly what is supposed to happen, what is supposed to first to say, and it's frictionless. I don't have to stop what I'm doing to um, try to click on Zoom and figure out how to share my screen, how to share my slide application, and so on and so forth. And the same thing happens with the screen share. With the press of a button, I can bring the screen share to my screen. It's a design, it's a composition of my screen share with my camera that I create inside of OBS. I'm not using the screen share feature on Zoom and I'm not using the slideshow feature on Zoom. I'm designing what uh, the audience is experiencing. And this is the difference between a meeting and a virtual audience experience. Zoom is great because you can just open Zoom and without any preparation, you can share your screen, you can share a video, you can do all of those stuff without any preparation. But it takes a little bit of time, like one or two, three clicks, which is okay for a meeting. But when you are in an audience experience, you are ready, you're talking to this audience, you're trying to convince them, you are trying to teach them and make them go through a direction, for example, make some choices. So you, you have to be connected to your audience and the, every single detail that makes you stop and adds these frictions is going to play against uh, your, your goal. And what we do when we are in front of a virtual audience is we take this time, this, we have a little bit of preparation time before the session so that we can have the, the, the screen set up, ready to go at any moment. We have the slide set up, ready to go at the press of a button. So we have this little bit of preparation before the session so that when, when we are in the session, we can make it instant and we can create impact by immediately responding and create these kinds of interactions by bringing slides at the right moment, by sharing screen at the right moment. With, if someone asks a question, this happens a lot, of, a lot to me when I'm doing Q and A's, some people, someone will ask me a question and I will say, all right, so let me show what I mean. And with the press of the button, I'm already sharing my screen. I'm, I'm, I'm already showing them how to do it, how explaining the thing in detail. It's immediately. And this make this fast paced, it, um, making it fast paced it allows uh, us to get more in deep with our content, deliver more and deliver at a higher level. So if getting started in creating something like this on OBS, it's pretty simple. You just need three things for what is explained so far. You need a scene with just a camera, nothing more. You need a scene with your slideshow and your camera, and you need a scene with your camera and your screen share. And you can just do that on OBS in like 10 minutes. You plug it into Zoom and there you go. You have a much more fluid, more interactive um, experience for your teaching environment online. And there is a territory that I don't think people are exploring much or at all with 
which is for me the, the single number one reason for making it on Zoom, the kind of interact, making it interactive. I don't think people are really making justice to doing something on Zoom. And there are several ways that you can do that. And one of them that I, I mentioned in the previous episode is bringing people on the screen live with you. And what I want to focus today is in the interaction in the chat. The chat is a great place for you to interact with your audience because you can make everyone feel participating of a session. Some people might not speak, some people might not even have their camera on, but mostly everyone can type and they can interact this way. So designing strategies for creating interaction in the chat is super, super important, especially if you either if you have a small group or a big group, doesn't matter, chat is super important. And I've seen people with bigger groups, like 500 people that is super afraid of the chat. And I understand that because it will get out of control. You, there is no way you as the presenter can um, look at 500 people sending messages on the chat. But there is a way for your workflows for you to use this better. And I'm going to explain some of those here now for you. So the chat is a great place for you to ask questions and opinions of people from people. So you can ask questions and opinion in the chat. And the way or even ask people to ask questions for you in the chat. The way that I see most people doing it is they, especially when they have a storm of messages, they will just crawl and try to read one of the questions and they will start reading the questions. And the participants have no idea where the question is. In this moment, you make people stop what they're doing, which is pay attention to what you're saying and go jump into the chat, trying to find this question you are reading. And by the time they find it, you already have answered. So they missed the answer. So there is a disconnection in the chat where you are misdirecting the attention of your participants by telling them to go to the chat to read what the message that you chose. So the number one thing that you must do is finding a way to bring the message to the screen. And there is a few different ways you can do that. And uh, the way that I'm doing is with an extension called Social Stream Ninja. This is an, uh, an, a Chrome extension that I am a developer as well with, together with Steve from uh, the creator of OBS Ninja. There's now is VDO.Ninja. Uh, I'm collaborating with him in the development of this Chrome extension. And what it does is basically allows you to run a second Zoom inside of Chrome and it captures the message that people are sending on the, on the chat. And it allows you to choose and display on screen any message that you want. So it's super, super cool. And it's, um, it's something that will add a lot to your session. Every message that appears, you're able to click and you're able to bring to the screen. And if you run a session where you have such a large amount of people, so you're not going to be able to filter these messages and find what you want, you can even have a moderator. The moderator can select from another place for you these messages so that you only see the message that you want. You only um, bring to the screen the messages that were pre-selected by someone else on your team, for example. This will open a lot of things for you. For example, when you're doing a live session, things happen and uh, things must happen. The one reason why you are doing this live on Zoom is because you, you want your audience to be a co-creator of the session. Otherwise you would just do a YouTube video or a YouTube live stream. And even a live stream, you want the audience to be a co-creator of the session as well. But more especially on Zoom, you want them to be part of the experience and making the experience. So you want, if something happens in uh, some technical aspect uh, of the, the session needs to be fixed it, or you need more time, um, for whatever reason you need to buy some time, if you have someone on your team 
pre-selecting these messages, you can just say, okay, so let me do a quick Q&A now, and you then pop in the messages that someone has pre-selected for you. And you will know that these are good questions because they are on your team. So you can have these messages to have an instant Q&A anytime that you need. If you want to do a pause, or if you just need a little bit of time, or you do want to do a Q&A session at the end, for example, you can be selecting, um, you you can do that, but you can have also someone, it's either way it works, it's just like some clicks on the screen. If you can, you have a small group and you can click on screen to select the messages, you can like very simply queue them up for when you want to, to bring them up on screen. And apart from that, there is something that I'm loving, loving trying out, which is the word cloud. So, you know, I've been um, I've been trying this word cloud that doesn't require require people to go to a, a link. Like you have Slido, uh, which is a software that allows you to make polls with the audience and several other things, including a word cloud, which basically means people send a word and the word appears on the screen at the size. The more people send the same word, the, the bigger this word is going to be. And the less people send this word, the less, uh, the, the smaller this word is going to be. So um, this is a great way to get opinion from an audience. You just ask them about something and then they are just storming ideas. I've seen this in, uh, for example, um, a tutoring session asking people what are the software that they use, what kind of software they use for a certain thing. And you, you would see this popping up, all these different names of so software going up on screen. And it's super cool. It's super cool to, for as a participant to kind of know the opinion, opinion of the room and how yours fits together. And it's uh, something that looks very good as well, because the way that I did was I didn't send people outside to another um, website. There are a lot of solutions that do that, like Slido. You, you send the audience a link, they open it on, on their phone, and then they interact with the session. I really don't like these kinds of solutions because you add a second screen to the experience and some people get lost and distracted. Other people that are able to get there has one more screen to get distracted. So you're not participating really, you're adding friction and you don't have everyone trying to click the link and go into this second thing. Because, um, well, it is one more thing to do. So there's a lot of steps, it's friction. Remember, I'm always looking into, we always should look into remove the friction. And I think that giving them a link like a software like Slido adds a friction enough for me to not be wanting to try it. But I was able to create something similar, which is a kind of experimental, one of the things that we are doing on Inside the Show. And is I'm, I'm very early tests of it and I'm loving it because people just send messages on the chat and it just appears in front of my camera and I can hide them and, and show at any moment. It doesn't require them to go to another screen. They just, just do that on, on the chat and it happens. And this is why it's so powerful to have uh, these kind of things that doesn't, uh, doesn't require people to go to a second website. The word cloud is something that I'm building in, is uh, more privately inside the, the community for the members. And, but the social media, uh, social stream ninja extension, it is open. So you can download and start using right now. I will put the link in the description and please do this setup and you are going to be able to bring messages from the audience on screen and they are going to really, it's going to make a huge difference. And the cool thing about this extension is that it works with YouTube, Instagram, live, LinkedIn Live, Facebook Live, all these different platforms. It's a single setup and it works with everything. So if you are even doing a live stream on Zoom and streaming to YouTube, you can have messages from people from different streaming platforms and even Zoom popping up on screen. It's super cool. And it doesn't add more complexity to do to the setup. It's already built in. So these are the ways that I'm supercharging my teaching experience on Zoom. I'm using OBS 
to, and I'm not using screen share to share slides or screen. And I'm using the chat with the social stream media extension. This, just this, if you do just these steps, you're going to leave your audience really mind blown.